Construction makes up around 10% of Australia's economic output. But the early indications of the profound effect of COVID-19 point to a decline in new projects and delays on existing ones. And it is in connection with those delays that the application of existing construction law deserves close consideration. So do Australian construction contracts stand up to scrutiny in the face of a pandemic? Probably not. Let's look at why. One of the unique features of construction projects is the way in which they are underpinned by chains of two party contracts, where one party promises payment in return for the other's promise of the performance of future works. And whether we are speaking in the context of travel bans, the procurement of component parts from overseas, or the effect of regulation regarding social distancing, the question to which so many are returning is that of which of the parties to those contracts must be taken to have borne the risk of COVID-19 and its consequences. Of course, each project and each contract is different and it is not possible to make general statements that will address all contracts. But the surveys that the construction law program have undertaken indicate that most projects are contractually based on standard forms and discussion has commenced among construction lawyers as to the adequacy of those forms in the provision of remedies in a COVID-19 world. And the present issue provides a rare opportunity to look at the way in which it is being considered simultaneously by construction lawyers worldwide and to see whether there is anything in their approaches that will assist Australian lawyers in dealing with COVID-19 related delay to Australian projects. The discussion internationally is suggesting three primary lines of argument for those seeking contractual relief. The first of those has been to ask whether a contract will provide relief for force majeure. In other words, unforeseen circumstances that inhibit or delay performance of the contractual obligations. But force majeure is a civil law concept and force majeure provisions are more commonly found in contracts in countries with historically greater cross-border experience than that of Australia. Generally speaking, Australian standard forms of construction contract do not expressly recognise the force majeure concept and absent suitable amendment are unlikely to offer comfort to contractors contending for force majeure where a project is delayed. The common law principle most closely allied to force majeure is the doctrine of frustration. And here, it can at least be said that the standard forms recognise the doctrine. However, they do so only to regulate its consequences. Might the common law doctrine therefore avail a contractor on an Australian project seeking relief from delay precipitated by COVID-19? At first blush, it might be thought that the decision of the High Court in Cadelpha is of assistance. One of the several noteworthy aspects of Cadelpha lies in the recognition by the High Court that future contractual obligations can be discharged by frustration, where those obligations are merely delayed, as distinct from becoming incapable of being performed. However, the frustrating event in Cadelpha was a rarity, the procurement by third parties of an injunction restraining the timely performance of the works, where the principal had represented that no such injunction would be granted. As the construction lawyer's Bible, Hudson, puts it, Cadelpha may be best regarded as an unusual application of the established doctrine to particular facts. The third line of argument emerging internationally may be given the designation of change in law. Here, at least, Australian standard construction forms recognise that post-contract legislative requirements can increase the cost to the contractor of the works and that it is only fair that some appropriate adjustment should be made to the contract price as a consequence. If one takes the instance of state-enforced social distancing as applied to a construction site, two questions are likely to arise. The first is to what extent a particular delay can be said to have been caused by COVID-19 on the one hand, and to what extent it was caused by the legislature's consequential requirement of social distancing on the other. And when that causation issue is resolved, the second question arises. 
is the standard form relevantly engaged? Here, sadly for Australian contractors, no joy is provided by the standard forms, which are essentially directed to changes in law, which change the scope of works or increase the fees payable to an authority having jurisdiction over the works. That position can be contrasted with the approach of the major international forms, where the relevant treatment includes the express acknowledgement that any change in law may be a compensation event, and the specification of relief or delay caused by, and I quote, unforeseeable shortages in the availability of personnel or goods caused by epidemic or governmental actions. Australian lawyers, particularly those advising contractors and others on the supply side of the industry, are unlikely to find answers to COVID-19 issues in the most widely used standard forms of a construction contract. Of course, the contract will not always provide complete solutions to project issues, and the commendable degree of social responsibility on display in Australia in the past month offers heart the rigid application of contract terms will give way to common sense and joint and alternative approaches. But what COVID-19 perhaps points up is the lack of recognition in the Australian forms by comparison with the widely interused international forms that in this globalised world, component parts of works will be delivered in cross-border transactions. And that is a matter that those charged with the delivery of standard forms in Australia should consider in the next iteration of those forms.